Hey, what's up, everybody? Josh KI6NAZ. There was an interesting discussion that came up on the Facebook group not too long ago. And uh, there was an assumption, I think, that this individual had that they needed to have an antenna analyzer. And, and affectionately, we're referring to a handheld device that you would put onto a feed line for an antenna to check out what your SWR, your standing wave ratio is. And so today, I want to break that down a little bit on why that may be... Um, a wrong assumption to make. So thanks for watching today on the Ham Radio Crash Course. So an antenna analyzer kind of as I already said is a device we use to check out if our what the standing wave ratio is on our antenna. The lower the standing wave ratio the general feeling and science backs this up, that you're getting more of your power down the feed line and out of the antenna. There are assumptions, very high SWR antennas that uh, we're not really talking about today, but generally, depending on the antennas you encounter in the wild or the antennas you build on your own, you're likely aiming to get as low an SWR as possible. And I should mention, of course, I'm, I'm bringing this up not to shame this individual because it's a totally honest assumption to make or a misconception to have. So that's not what this is for. It's to hopefully educate anybody that may be on this uh, same assumption or have a similar thought to maybe change um, what their beliefs are regarding antenna analyzers. So you get the idea. It's a tool for measuring kind of how an antenna is working. Now, I'll mention the big thing right up front. These are generally used by people that are building antennas or making antennas or have an antenna that's kind of mostly built and needs to be fine-tuned. Uh, people who like to constantly mess with things, if you will, to get the best performance out of it, like a car or whatever. You would have tools specifically for that and an antenna analyzer fills that role. In this case, the individual had a, a super antenna a super antenna is kind of like a Wolf River coil antenna in that you have a loading coil and you have this collar that goes up and down. Super antenna is a similar design. And the antenna is designed, again, that you slide up and down this loading coil to change the SWR for the given frequency you're on. Now, it's true that having an antenna analyzer would make that potentially easier because you would just leave the SWR on, um, display on the analyzer, and then just go and adjust this down and you would actively live see the standing wave ratio number on the analyzer. So that is a true assumption that it would help make it easier. But I think the misunderstanding is that it is required. And part of the reason for that is I think uh, some people don't know enough about their particular radios to know that there are functions in the radios, almost all of them that I've ever experienced, to display what your SWR is when you're using it. And there's a multitude of ways to accomplish this off the top of my head. Uh, the Elecraft KX2 has a button that will just display the SWR. The 7300 has a couple of ways of displaying it, but one of the ways is you can just see the SWR when you're transmitting um, on the little gauge on the bottom, which is right here if you are in expanded mode right here. You can change this by just clicking it and it'll show you SWR. Now, the key thing, the important thing to remember here is that like with a radio like the 7300, you do need to be transmitting on something that has a constant carrier. In my case, I like to use RIDI. I like to use AM would work for this too. And then you would key down and you'd get a constant carrier, meaning you're putting out whatever the power output is that your radio is set to. So you do need a couple of watts going through it at least to get that SWR reading. Now, obviously this isn't live. It's, a, it's a at the moment, at the transmit time. And, and if you had a really bad SWR antenna um, and it's not designed to be a high SWR antenna, you might want to limit how long you have the PTT button held down. But with an antenna like this, something I have done in the past, like with the KX2, I would make an adjustment 
and then go check the SWR. Make an adjustment, go check the SWR. So yes, it's a bit of back and forth. You'd be running back and forth to, to make that all work. Um, but you'd want to do this anyway when it's connected to the final radio that you're going to be using, connected to the final feed line, your coax that you would be using. So you're just running back and forth like a squirrel, um, adjusting the antenna, reading the SWR, adjusting the antenna, read the SDR. And that's all there is to it. So. I'm making this video because, you know, for people starting out, that if they have an assumption that they need an SWR, it's likely that your radio already has the capability to display it for you and that you don't necessarily need one when starting out. Antenna analyzers can be ex very expensive. I know that there are cheap examples of antenna analyzers like the Nano VNA for $50, but that's nowhere near as just take it out of the box, push a couple of buttons, and you're off to the races like the rig experts are. Um, so keep that in mind. You don't need to necessarily drop $200, $300, $400, $500 dollars in some cases for the really full featured antenna analyzer. You may want to start looking at it when you get to the point that you are going to build antennas. I know that's when I did. Uh, I made a couple of dipoles without ever having, an, having to need an antenna analyzer, just using my radio. But then as I started doing more with radio, playing around with loading coils, stuff like that, then I would actually recommend it for that when you're building in the shack like homebrew antennas. But if you're operating, uh, particularly if you're operating mobile or portable and you don't have an antenna analyzer on you, don't worry about it. Just uh, use the features that your radio already has and that should save you some time. Now I will add one addendum of something you may want to add to your uh, radio kit that is not a antenna analyzer. It's much cheaper than that. It's an SWR indicator. And this is gonna be specifically for people that have radios that don't have an SDR display, likely QRP radios, like a mountain topper, I believe, doesn't have that, or my MFJ does not have a SWR um, display on it. It does, these indicators do, however, have an LED that as you get the antenna to resonant, most resonant, has a low SWR or lowest SWR that you can get, when you're transmitting, the LED will be very bright. These are very small. They go onto the feed point of your radio. So that's just a bit of a tip. If you enjoyed this kind of just talky talky, uh, let's talk about some important things to know about amateur radio when you're starting out. Leave me a comment below and give me a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. It helps out the channel. And let's me know that you like this kind of thing. This is a little bit, uh, dis little bit not standard for my regular fare. Uh, I am Josh, KI6NAZ. Uh, you've been watching the Ham Radio Crash Course, and I'll talk to you later.